blockchains, cryptocurrencies, smart contracts, automations, and whatnot. I know you all want to understand what all these things are and the only problem that you face today is when you go to the internet and when you go to the YouTube or do some courses, they're all made out for techies and it is literally impossible for you to understand how exactly are these things actually working. So hello everyone, my name is Aishwari, I'm a chartered accountant and I'm Calcutta alum. And in this video, we're going to talk about what is blockchain and in the upcoming videos, I'm going to make you aware with very simple examples of what blockchains are, where, what are the use cases and everything. So if you still haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead, subscribe and press that bell icon so that you can go ahead and you can learn more about all these things and the things that are happening around you and how you can go ahead and make a career out of it because I certainly have. So now let's go ahead and let's start with what exactly all these things are. And to begin with, with the basics, let's start with what exactly is blockchain. Now, if I talk about blockchains, what exactly is a blockchain? I can read out the definition and that's something that you can do on the internet itself. So what exactly is my role here? So let me go ahead and make an example. That helps you in understanding what exactly is blockchain, how blockchains work, what are the various things that a blockchain can do and it can help you update yourself. So the first thing is, let's take an example. Let's take an example. So no matter who you are, what is your age frame or anything like that, you would have always, always went into a party. You would have always gone with your, with your friends to watch out a movie and something like that. So this example relates to you. What exactly or how exactly is this something that is coming up? So let's take an example. Let's say you five friends and your five friends, you, you all of all five of you are going for a movie. Now, when you're going for a movie, sometimes you often feel now that that guy has taken more money. I don't feel that he has actually spent it. So that's something that comes to your mind. So, but you will not say it because you feel okay. This is something. If I go ahead and say it, a lot of people will make a fuss about it, and I don't want to actually go ahead into it, and I don't want to inspect. Now, similarly, so what? Uh, let's say one thing that you can do is you can create a Google form. And in that Google form, what you can do is you can add all the five email IDs of all the people who are going ahead. And every time anyone goes ahead and makes an expense, let's say you are the one who is booking the movie tickets. So you do the movie ticket booking. And as soon as you get the message that this is the amount that I've spent, you can put it on the Google Drive along with the total expense that you've done. Similarly, other four friends, maybe someone would have bought you the uh, cold ring, someone would have bought snacks, someone would have paid for you to come to the movie hall, someone is taking you back and all those things. So everyone can, can do that. Now that's, that's relatively very easy to do and you are able to see when and what exactly are the expenses that have been done. Now this is something which is on a very smaller scale. Now let's imagine this is how the whole companies start to work and all the data is saved on a centralized server. The centralized server, let's say, is of any entity which is out there, which is providing you these kinds of services. And, and all the data is saved on the centralized servers of that particular uh, company in which you're saving that data. Now, having the centralized data, there are two problems that I foresee. The first problem is that data which is there. So if any external party goes ahead and attacks that database and somehow is able to corrupt that database, all the data is lost. So that's the external problem that I have. The internal problem that I also have is because your data is getting stored in a server which does not belong to you. On a later date, what can happen is you can enter into a place whereby they can delete that data, they can modify that data, they can edit that data. So this is one problem which I also foresee. Apart from that, your friends also later on, what they can do is on that Google sheet, they can also modify the figures when you are maybe not looking. So this is something, these are the three problems that I have with these centralized servers. So let's talk about blockchains. Let's talk about public blockchains because that's what blockchains really are. And let's talk about something which is the first public blockchain that was out there, which is Bitcoin. Now what happens in a Bitcoin network? This data is not centralized anywhere. Here the data is something which is completely decentralized. Being decentralized, it means that you are going ahead and you are saving that data in multiple, multiple places. 
let's say if I talk about Bitcoin, it has more than 100,000 servers whereby the, all the data that is out there is getting saved. Now, if that is the thing that is happening out there, the best part about this is you can corrupt one, you can corrupt two, you can corrupt 100, you can corrupt 1000 from the external sources, but all the people, uh, all the hackers in the world cannot attack that one lakh servers that are out there and corrupt all of them. So you can corrupt one, two, three hundred thousand, but not one lakh at one single point of time. So it becomes almost impossible for you to corrupt that data. Also, if you have written anything, let's say on this decentralized platform, which is on running on blockchain systems. Now, once you have put your data in a block and that block has been put on the blockchain, what happens is you cannot go ahead. You cannot edit that data. You cannot modify that data. You cannot go ahead and you cannot do anything with that data except one thing you can add more data so uh, coming to the original example what happens is let's say uh, if your friend tries to change that data on a later point of time he cannot what he can do is he can add another entry saying that okay that last entry that i made let's say it was for it was for 100 rupees less but actually i spent 100 rupees more so this is an, an additional amount uh, entry that i'm doing because i cannot now go ahead and edit that so what happens here is he cannot go ahead and he cannot manipulate that data. So even if the, this database is saved with someone else, he cannot go ahead and do that because if he, if one place at one place, he, the modification is done, what will happen is the other places where it is, what will happen? All that thing will be ignored and this data will have no value anymore. So that data, if anyone is also trying to manipulate internally, only he can manipulate one source of data, but not other sources of data. First of all, he cannot manipulate, but let's say he finds out a way in which he can manipulate. This is how he will not be able to manipulate it anymore. So this is something where you go ahead and you say that a blockchain is in the simplest form. It's kind of a ledger, like sim simply like the books of account that you have in your 10th, 11th or 12th, that books of account that you made or the digital accounting system, which is out there is kind of a ledger. It's kind of a book, which is basically everything that you're writing on it is time stamped. So nobody can go ahead and change that data. And I know exactly when that data has been entered into the system. Now, if I know when this data has been entered into the system and I cannot manipulate it, what does it give you? It gives you a order trail, which is not modified, which is not corrupted. So it's giving you an actual true and fair value, an actual true and fair view. So that is something which it gives with a timestamp series and having an immutable records of data. And it is not managed by a central database. It is managed by a cluster of computers, which is decentralized databases. And also it's not owned by a single entity. So all that data that you had earlier with, uh, with those Google Sheets or with all your apps that you download, it has a central server or it is controlled by a central entity. Here, this is something which is not controlled by a central entity. So that is how blockchains are something which are working, which are creating such kinds of databases where you cannot just go ahead, manipulate that data. And you actually know how much manipulation happens in a lot of things that are happening around you. I don't have to name them. You can cover, you can, but mention them in the comments below. I, I would love to know how much you feel is the manipulation going on across you or around you. So that is something that is happening around and all the data that is being put out there. It's something which is, uh, which all, uh, which is there is bound by cryptographic principles. So if I talk about Bitcoin, it is SHA-256, but this is, this, these are the security mechanisms that these platforms deploy. Now that is what exactly is a blockchain. I hope this makes it pretty clear about what blockchains are. And if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask in the comments below. If you like this video, you can go ahead and like. Uh, give me a like and the best part about knowing all these things is I'll be coming out with more and more videos once you get more and more videos you will be able to understand this technology more and more so stay tuned for the next video till then bye bye and take care